We're never going to uh, come to any sort of knowing about what's being talked about here today. It can't be known. It comes out of unknowing. It's the mystery of emptiness being form. It's the mystery of the formless being form. How can emptiness take form or be form? But that's what this is. This is emptiness in form. So what, what all there is here is emptiness but it seems to appear as something so I, I would call it energy so this is energy energy is boundless it's completely free and boundless and it's absolutely without any purpose or meaning it just is what it is this is what it is that's all it is and what seems to happen in energy is because it's free and totally boundless. It can also be limited. So when it becomes limited, apparently limited, in the human form it seems to have a feeling of contraction about it. So when contraction arises in the body, only apparently, it's not real, but when it seems to arise in the body it creates a sense of self-identity. Suddenly, in a tiny child, there is self-awareness, awareness of a self self-consciousness arises and what comes out of that is apparent individuality apparently there's an identity there is a center and as the child grows that center becomes me it's the self it's the I that arises in the body and it becomes as it as the child grows so that sense of identity becomes more and more real I am real I am a real person. And that whole sense that I am real brings everything else into that reality and everything else is seen also as real. I am real, the wall is real. I am real, you are real. You're over there, I'm over here. You're real, I'm real. We can relate, maybe. We have to relate. I have to relate to that because it's over there and I have to relate to the wall because it's over there. So what arises in that whole experience is dualism. The experience of dualism too. A split, a separation. And as that sense of separation becomes more and more apparent and is the experience of the me, so what comes with it is a sense of dissatisfaction, as though there's something missing. Feels as though there's something that is, isn't fulfilling about living in a dualistic reality. And also I want to be clear about this, the, the me, the self, when it contracts, doesn't enter something called dualism, a state. The me that is contracted is dualism. That's what it experiences, that's how it knows itself. And it lives in its own dualism. And it grows in that dualism and has to deal with a world that seems to be split, polarised. So it has to present itself in the world and make its life successful if it can. Because now, of course, there's success and failure. Dualism, success, failure, right, wrong inside, outside, above, below. And as the person grows up, so they learn to try to deal with a world that is split or dualistic. It's the reality that they live in and experience and know. They know it through awareness. Directly awareness enters the tiny child, it grows and lives in that awareness and it survives through the function of awareness. I know I am, I know I am sitting on a seat. I know I am walking up the road, I know I am eating. I know the sky, I know my reality. That's how it remains separate through awareness. But in some way or other, for a lot of people, that sense of being separate is not enough. It feels unfulfilling and so they seek Fulfillment, seeking arises. I'm, I, I want to be fulfilled. This isn't fulfilling. 
But of course, that sense of unfulfillment and that need to be fulfilled is still in the dualistic wheel. So now, because the individual experiences a dualism and is, and is dualism, it lives in, a, in, a, in that world and objectifies everything. It lives in a subject-object world. I am the subject and everything else is the object that's happening to me in simple terms. So then, when fulfilment arises, or the idea of being fulfilled arises, then the individual objectifies that fulfilment. I want something, something called fulfilment. So in order to achieve fulfilment in the reality I live in, I have to learn how to be fulfilled. I have to learn, I have to learn in, to be fulfilled. So I'm going to go to a teacher who will teach me how to become fulfilled. A Christian teacher, a Buddhist teacher, a teacher of enlightenment, a teacher of self-inquiry, it doesn't matter what it is, or a teacher of thera a therapeutic teacher who will teach me how to become a rounded individual and be happy. <laughs> and always there's a list. In the Christian, if I want to become a Christian, it's a huge list. <laughs> you should do this and you shouldn't do that. In the therapeutic world there is a list, forgive your mother, you know, be live in the moment or be or use mindfulness or something or other. forgive yourself for your being inadequate. It's a list. In the teaching of enlightenment world, there's also a list. You need to meditate, you need to self-inquire, you need to become aware, you need to be more loving, more open, more something or the other. It's always about you changing in order to become worthy of something you think you've lost. And all teaching is based actually on the idea, the, the idea that something is lost and can be found. Because all teaching is giving you a direction towards somewhere. So, what we're talking about here is that because the individual lives in a dualistic world and tries to find something and longs for something that's beyond that experience, then its whole effort within that dualistic wheel is wonderfully, beautifully, divinely futile. Anything it does can only bring another form of dualism, even if it's a bit more comfortable for a little while. It can never address that which it can't find, which is oneness. It can never address that, because that can't be addressed, because that's a mystery. Oneness can't be taught. Non-duality, although there is no such thing, can't be taught. There can't be a, such a thing as a non-dual teacher, because non-duality is a mystery which can't be taught. So we can share together in words the way the me seems to take form and how it experiences itself through words, we can do that. And in some way or other, the individual when it grows up collects all sorts of belief systems about itself and the nature of the world it thinks or dreams that it lives in, a dualistic world. We can share that together and in some way or other, the beliefs that surround the nature of individuality can possibly unravel. But the most liberating thing that happens when there's an openness to something beyond the possibility of self-fulfillment, <coughs> there's something that's energetic that could happen in that the contracted energy of the self can melt into the boundless energy. But nobody can do that. It just, that in some way or other, when there's a gathering together in this way, that seems to happen. So be open to just share anything you want to or ask anything you want to, and we could talk about it. And also be aware of the possibility that there's something else going on here.
Oh, he needs a mic. Tony, yesterday I felt in my physical realm just thrilling in my back, in the head and back of the head, and this kind of sensation, it opens more my heart. It was widening. It's what? It was widening, opening. Right. Yes. It, do you, ha, did you have that same experience in the park? When um, well, I didn't have an experience in the park. I was, yeah, there the, was no I was Tony Parsons experiencing walking across a park. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. In the usual, I'm walking across the park. I am. Yes. I am walking across the park. <laughs> and then suddenly, I was no more. There was no more an experience. There just was oneness, wholeness, unconditional love. I don't know. There's no description. And then, and then that was all there was. Timeless. And then I walked out of the other side of that, which seems to happen to quite a lot of people who have a glimpse or to whom a glimpse happens, let's put it that way. Okay. And I walked out of the other side and was still Tony Parsons in the I am. Okay. But somewhere already something had shifted. But did you feel something in the body because the body is... I don't know. You don't I know? Remember. Okay. <laughs> but there's no question that when the illusion of, of separation collapses, yes. the body relaxes, yes. because of course to, to stay in the world, the dualistic world of the self, is very anxiety making and very tense. So there's a lot of energy in maintaining a sense of identity which pulls away and so everything is more relaxed. And the other thing is that the energy that, that is given to the illusion of being a me it simply ceases to be there anymore, so the body has more energy. Yes. Okay, thank you. Maybe there's another question. Hmm. Uh, Nathan Jill, you know Nathan yeah. Jill, okay. Uh, I was reading his books and it was very nice. It's like the things you re write mm. about nothing. And then I wrote in a journal that he uh, has killed his himself 
because... Oh, well, no, nobody commits suicide. <laughs> yes, and... No, I, that, that implies that there's somebody who chooses to commit suicide. There isn't anyone. Ah, right. Just I was so surprised because mm. is, was there a realization of nothing and then a depression hits him. That's what I had read and I was surprised. Mm. Can that happen? Uh, uh, like anything else, anything yes, can happen. Yes, everything can happen. Yes. <laughs> but what, what I think you're doing is relating it to the idea that there's yes. still a self there. Yeah. There may or may not have been, you I don't, don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Yes, you don't know either. <laughs> okay. Sorry? That's what we're doing here. <laughs> Committing suicide, yeah. Without, without even knowing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you are allowed. I, I'll, I'll allow you. Oh, sorry, do you want to ask, do you want a microphone? No, oh. I want to give you a kiss. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> You're allowed to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Energetic problem. <laughs> <laughs> After the last residential, I was um, having dinner with people and I felt a lot of energy and I felt like, <laughs> I felt like there was light coming out mm. of me. Yeah, there is, like, it, this is to do with light and darkness. Mm. It felt very, I, I thought, in a way, I thought, thank God it's meaningless. So, well, thank God, in a way, I know it's meaningless. Yeah. Otherwise, I might think I'm enlightened or something. Yeah, that would be awful. <laughs> so it was good relief. Yeah, absolutely. The wonder of meaninglessness. Thank you. So the, the mystery will never be revealed because there's no one to reveal it to. Uh, and there it, is it doesn't have to be revealed because this is, is the mystery. Yes. It already is revealing itself. Everything yes. that is, is the mystery. Yes. So everything that is can't be known. Yeah, yeah. The problem for the, the seeker is that it wants to know everything. Yes. I know this, I know I am. I want to know, I'm sitting on a seat, I want to know, I want to know the wall. So in order to know the wall, it has to be aware of the wall. That's how it keeps it separate. Because the mystery is that there is only wholeness one. And that only becomes apparent when there isn't anybody trying to know it. It's the seeking that keeps the mystery at bay, away. It's always the seeking's there and the, the mystery is there. Now, w what it does is the, um, I feel a lot of busyness in my body yeah. with every question because it, it, it makes you a, see a seeker. Yeah, at the yeah, moment, you yeah. go and seek with the question, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's a jolly tiring business because it's much nicer if you <laughs> yeah, yeah. let go.
Um, when the sense of self appears for the first time, in my, in my memory, it happened long before any education. Any? Education. Yeah, well, it there usually was no happens in the first year or two. Very early, I think. Yeah, very early, early. in the first so year. So there was no education of language or everything? Oh, no, no, no. Nothing no. at all? No. So it's for me, me... It's just energy. Yeah. It was just the looking of people. I saw the eyes of people and then I just realized they are looking at me. Mm. Suddenly there was the fear of me. Mm. Very frightening. And then I remember in the, in the period after, I tried to get rid of it. Every time I woke up, I thought, oh God, it's still there. Oh, right, well, yeah. And I can get, ah, like it sticks to you and, and yeah, then you does. cannot get rid of it. Yeah, you and keep you, it there. And you try away. two, three times when you wake up and then you just give up in, in, at a certain moment because you think it's nothing you can do. Yeah. So, which is so. Uh, this whole thing happens actually completely natural without actually just by the senses working in in the world. So, so yeah. how well, me 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 yeah. just stay. It actually is locked there by awareness. So when it it's yeah, it's, it's like a holds it there. Yeah, but then I'm just wondering if if it's so natural, it happens by by the working of the senses. How could it ever stop stop? Well, when you say natural, I wouldn't call it natural. It's what happens. To me, natural means that it is... That is true. I didn't do anything. It's, it's, it's it just, simply what happened. It just happened. Yeah. But what I mean is it just happened by natural functioning, I suppose. Well, you could, you, if you want to say that, that's fine, yeah. That, so, it certainly happens. So how could... There's there nothing that you can do about not being you because you are you. The illusion can't dispel itself. All of a sudden there's the illusion of being a me, you're in a, you are dualism and you can't escape from dualism however hard you try because you're trying to escape from dualism through dualistic means. That's exactly. all you can use, mm -hmm. function on, like a teaching or a process. All of that does is keeps you locked into yeah. dualism. So once it is there, there's absolutely no way to get rid of it. Well, there's no way to get rid of it because it isn't really there. Yeah, that's... It's actually an illusion, but, it, but the illusion can't dispel that illusion. It just, it, however hard it tries, through whatever process it thinks it can use, it can't dispel it because it's, it's all in a wheel, dualistic wheel. Yeah, because it, it gets... But in some way or other, it seems that when that's illuminated from a different approach, another possibility is, is, is um, shared, then somewhere or other, that whole imprisonment seems to unfold or unravel. Oh, yeah. There isn't anybody, anybody that does that. It's simply that the me is so locked into that that it can't escape from it. And then it may hear, or there may be an under, a comprehension that there's some other possibility. Then the beliefs that mm. keep that but me locked in exactly. can unravel, start mm. to unravel. But the basic thing is an energetic thing. That mm. in some way other, that energy of contraction suddenly just the back mm. But there's nothing that anybody can do about that. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it's exactly the first time somebody explains it so clearly. Yeah. Because yeah. you cannot hear it anywhere. No, no. It's just... You'll hardly ever hear this yeah. message. Yeah, that's it. You'll hear lots of messages about how to become fulfilled, but yeah, not... Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. A message that you will never become fulfilled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we cannot get rid of it, but anyway we are no. here. You are it. You are it, so you can't get rid of it. Oh. Uh, Tony, you, you mentioned that um, at a very early age we uh, acquire self-awareness comes up. It seems to happen, yeah. And, at this, and from that comes the constriction or the contraction mm. uh, of that. Well, no, it's the, con the energetic contraction is the initial apparent happening and out of the in initial contraction comes the self-awareness. There's a sudden sense of there's something in here which is dualism. It's, there's a energy in here now and that is I am. That's the beginning of the illusion that I am a person. 
Okay. I guess my question is, if, if that didn't happen at an early age to humans, for example, uh, would we be living lives closer to uh, animals? And I don't mean that in yeah, a bad well, sense. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you can't say that this happens to everyone, and I, but I haven't met anybody yet who hasn't become contracted in that sense, but I'm sure there may be people. But it is, it is, when you say it's like being an animal, but it is being an animal, but there isn't anybody that's being the animal. There aren't any, there's nothing else that is separate. Dogs, cats, grass, trees are all simply whole because there's no awareness, there's nothing there that has any self-awareness. They just are being this. That's what this is, the dropping away of the illusion of there being someone. And what's left is very simple and ordinary. But there's nobody in that anymore. There just is what seems to be happening. So it's the contraction that causes things like fear of death, and yeah. uh, if you didn't have that, there would be no fear. No, because you wouldn't be, there wouldn't be anybody to be afraid of death. The fear of death is, is, is in the story. Me, is, the self is afraid of death because he thinks it's real, and that one day it will die. When the actual moment of death, real death occurs, there is a recognition at that point or realisation, not by anyone, but there's a recognition that there never was anybody to die. Uh, but in, in the same way you could say that about liberation, in the living body there can be suddenly a recognition that there never was anyone or any self, and the whole feeling I am is illusory. This is about death, really. This is this, this what's the message here is about death, it's about the loss of something. Tony, just I remember all at once when he talked about his early age that I was very frightened as a little kid because I tried to sleep and then all the walls in the sleeping room were disappearing and I saw all kind of creature and demons walking inside, outside and I was even forget, I was forgotten that till he told me that. And so I remember and later on in uh, working with people, with the psychiatry, um, I saw demons was working, walking inside the body and walking out and they were, that was very miserable to see Sometimes I could send them away. But well, you thought you could, yeah. Sorry? 
You believed you could. Yes, that, that, that yeah, yes. Yeah, so that's that, all a story. That's just, a, that's just another story. You're talking about a personal experience. Yes, but what's happening there? Oh, it's, it, what's Not, happening is a personal experience, ah, which has no meaning of any kind. Yes, and I thought that was spirituality. Sorry? I thought in the early years that is spiritual. No, no. Nah, but no. it was not. There it isn't was, anything uh, just spiritual. This is not a spiritual In a short time, I just now, I yeah. realize that's nothing. Yeah. No. And, and walking in another dimension is nothing. It's, yeah. it's form too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Just... Very dramatic. Okay. But okay. meaningless. Sure. A meaningless drama. Yes. But it's a special drama. Oh, it's special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, Tony, when the uh, purpose is uh, experience nothing. When, when, sorry. Uh, experiencing no, there is experience anything of experience nothing. Experience is nothing. Nothing All there is, is nothing. To see wholeness. Sorry? To see wholeness. No, you don't see wholeness. You don't see wholeness. No, there you don't see wholeness or experience nothing. There's only the me, the self, that experiences sitting on the seat or whatever it is. And through that experience, that awareness of sitting on a seat, then it remains separate from what is. When that whole illusion collapses, there is just nothing, or emptiness, or whatever. There's no one in it that experiences it. There's nothing that knows anything anymore. There's only unknowing. There's only aliveness. Happening to no one. <laughs> but uh, uh, then there is knowing. Like no, there knowing, is no knowing, 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 the the end of knowing, knowing. knowing of the experience, no, that the, there is no. nothing. <laughs> in, in the story of me, yeah. the me, the I am, knows or experiences things happening. When that illusion that there is a knowing of things happening collapses, there's only unknowing. There's nothing that knows there's unknowing, there's just unknown. It's very simple. Yeah. And completely and utterly obvious, except to me. Me doesn't get this. Me wants to know, so when it hears about, hears this message, it doesn't want this message, it rejects it, it doesn't comprehend it, it doesn't know it. But, but how, can, how can that which wants to know, know unknowing? So it devalues it, it, it puts it in a, puts it out, so it throws it away because it can't. Comprehend this. There is no need for acceptance or for anything no, at all. No, no, acceptance is all that. That's just a teaching. <laughs> be accepting, be loving, be open, yeah. be honest, be courageous, be humble. It's bullshit. Yeah. It's religion. It's yeah, right. telling somebody how they should be in order to become fulfilled. It's all part of the dream. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Tony, are you aware that... Um, I'm not aware. There's no one here. <coughs> There's no one here. There just is what is. No, I didn't finish my question yet. Oh. No. no. Are you aware there is a website in Holland with all kinds of teaching, teachers? And that Tony Parson is one of the names on that website. Yeah. It's got five stars over it. I don't know how many stars. <laughs> what, what do you think about that? Sorry? What do you think about that? I don't think anything about it. It's just what it is. Except that the only thing about any of that is that um, in some way it sounds as though th 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 this appears there, the open secret is there with a lot of teachers. But the teachers, there, there's no relevance or meeting between teaching and this message. So I don't know why I'm there. That's all. This is not a teaching. Uh, uh, what happened in the park, you can't really call it an experience. No. no, it wasn't an experience. I was there and then I wasn't. There was just emptiness and fullness. 
empty was fullness. There was just empty fullness, which is a mystery. But there was and a then difference. I came out of the other side and wondered what had happened. But there was a difference. Something was noticed. Yeah, but not, there wasn't anybody in that happening. There wasn't anybody that could know that. There was no knowing. There was just empty fullness. And then Tony Parsons came out of the other side and tried to know that or find it. That's all. It's a glimpse. People in this room have had a glimpse, I'm sure. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> People Nobody do here. have. There are glimpses that happen. They don't have them, but they happen. But there was a before and an after. Well, on, only in the story, in the description of the story. In, in all the time there's a, a me, a Parsons, a Tony Parsons, or an I am, there's always an apparent story. So I am is walking in a part, there's nothing, there's empty fullness, and then I am walks out of the other side, directly walks out of the other side, the story starts again. But the story is not real. And was, uh, is it always a sudden? Uh, a well, it's thing? not sudden, it's timeless. So okay. there's time walking along, and then, there's, and then there's me walking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean the, the collapse, is that always a sudden thing? Well, it, you've already asked that, it's timeless, it's not, in that way it's sudden if you like, yeah. Okay. It's completely out of the world of the seeker, the seeker has no idea about any of it. It's not that the eye can f that the eye can fade away. The eye yeah. isn't there at all. And when the whole thing collapses, the me collapses and doesn't come back. That that is the end of the idea that time and story and I am is real. Hey, that guy wants a mic. Is there one nearby? Sorry, one more question. Uh, you said in, in the story of your, the timeline of your park walk, you seem to have survived that. Uh, at the end, you said Tony Parsons was still there. Yeah. Did something subsequently happen to sort of finish you off? Or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if so, what? You could, you could say that, like, there's a glimpse and there's no one, so there's just beingness. And then being seems to come back. Don't forget, energy can do, any, energy can do anything. So there's me, being, me, being, me, and then there's being, and the mean that is the illusion that, that of being real just doesn't come back one day. So eventually it just went away completely. The, 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 the sense of I just went away completely after, yeah. after some time though. Well, apparently after some time, yeah. That's what seems to happen. It, it, there aren't any rules, so it can be immediate. I know that I know the people who are there and then not there, and that's all over. It's quite rare, but that can can be.
you, you say, I understand, well, you say there is me and B and me. That's, when, when I think about it, I think that when the being uh, has stopped and the me is there again, then there will be more pride in the me. More pride. pride. The me will be proud oh. that, that he has been enlightened or something or... Oh, right. Maybe. I don't know. But don't forget both are the same thing. Sorry? Me is being and being is me. There is no difference. No, no, but there's a kind of a switch, you say. Yeah, the me, when it comes back, might think that it's proud of itself. I don't know. Anything can happen. Me is incredibly arrogant. Yeah. And is the most important. I mean, Tony Parsons was the most important person in the world at one time. Yeah. <laughs> so me, me is very self-centered. Everything does, everything that me apparently does. Of course, he doesn't do anything. But apparently, what it thinks it does, dreams that it does, is all entirely for its own glorification. But doesn't that help. doesn't that bear the risk that um, kind of an experience or, of awakening or something hey, that you had in the park that it perverts the uh, the me that it. Uh, Strongens the ego, the me. Uh, there's a, of course. Yeah. There's always that. So what? Nothing matters. But is it that more it's the only, chance uh, that you need to switch back? That would is be concerned about that would be me because me thinks everything has a purpose, leading towards fulfilment. It's bullshit. So it doesn't matter. Being proud of being me or not being proud of me is completely irrelevant. Sure, but that's not that's not the standpoint of the. Uh, the me that's proud. The me is pride not an obstacle. It's what it is. It's what happens. There isn't a right or a wrong. It's just what happens. Isn't it a sticky thing? No, it's <laughs> what it is. You're now, what you're, now what you're doing is talking about it in a dualistic way. The experience that of pride might be for the me wrong because it's grown up and been taught that to be proud is wrong but that's all comes out of the illusion there isn't anything that's right or wrong there is only what is it's not right or wrong it's what it is it's only in the world of me this little tight little world of me that there are polarities and there's right and wrong and be better and worse and honesty and courage and all that crap. It's just a story. It's polarity. Everything directly dualism arises, polarity arises, better or worse, in or out. What you see in the world today is a battle of polarities. There's so much uh, the, the, the investment in dualism in me, which is colossal now, is bringing up very, very powerful polarities. You're watching a world where polarities are becoming more extreme. And of course, inevitably, that has to lead to self-destruction. Because for me, in the end, longs to be absent. But you are not, you are not a fan of polarity. So I'm not... Not a fan of polarity. I'm not a fan of anything. I'm no. not. I am not. No. There's nothing left. This is just a, you know, this is all we're doing here is describing a mystery, but it doesn't come out of any knowledge. This isn't coming out of a held knowledge about this. It's coming out of emptiness. Emptiness is describing itself in, in the way that it takes form. That's what's happening here. It takes form, trees and everything, and also it takes form in the self, and, 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 and dualism and separation. It's just describing that. It's not suggesting there's anything right or wrong about any of it. Any of it. It's just, this is, look, all this is, is an illumination out of nothing, of the way nothing or emptiness takes form. Yes, I understand that, but... Um, it's not I suggesting that there's anything that can be done about that. So this is not a teaching. It's not trying to teach anybody anything. It's just illuminating something. What did you say the last? It's just illuminating something. It's just saying, look, this is the way it is. Yeah. It may be quite radical for the me that believes everything is a certain way. Well, it is radical. Because it completely unravels the whole idea of the me and the idea of purpose 
life having a purpose or meaning. <laughs> but it's also not saying that that which believes it is a real person with purpose and meaning, there's nothing, there's something wrong with that. It's not saying there's anything wrong with that. It's just saying, this is the form I take. I am emptiness and this is the form I take. That's all this is. You say energy is wild. 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 Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Does it's that mad mean? and it's very, very naughty. Does that mean that all the, the laws of nature is inside the story then? Sorry, please. Does that mean that all the laws of nature like gravity and everything which structures is inside the oh, story? Or just another form. <coughs> they don't have any significance. There is nothing that's significant. So the laws of physics or nature, it's just uh, energy or emptiness in a certain form. The problem for me is that it then thinks those things have significance and importance. But it has a structure. It gives a structure to what is happening. The laws of nature seem to give a structure, a, an order to what is happening. Only apparently. Uh, it's not real. So it's inside the story. It's just an appearance. Mm. What you say there is me. Yeah. <coughs> what you say there is something like reality, or is that a, a term, well, a concept that's not, not... There are lots of different realities, yeah. you could say. One of them is the separate reality. The separate reality is the experience of dualism. When that collapses, you could then say the only reality is, is, uh, is the, the reality of empty, empty fullness. But there's no one in it, of course. It just is that appearance, the appearance of empty fullness. In simple terms, you could say there are those two realities. And what is, I, I, I go on with what, what he said, what is the relationship to, with, between that reality and the physical world? Well, the physical world is that reality. Is that reality? This is empty fullness. There is only empty fullness. But There's usually, nothing else about that. But usually we make a difference between consciousness and physical reality. Oh, well, reality. you would do, the me does, because, it, because, it, because consciousness, you see, is, another, is the, the modern word for God. So uh, for the me, in self and cry and all those sort of things, the idea that there is something called consciousness, infinite consciousness, is a replacement for the idea of there being a God. Because essentially the me, the I am, you know, self inquiry is very much involved with I am, I know, I am aware, focus your awareness, you know, all that stuff, is, is, is guided and driven by the, by the idea of there being infinite consciousness, which is the infinite knowing. It's like, it's just, um, it's just another uh, way of having a God that you can, you can move towards through supreme knowing. It's a lovely game. It's actually just self-glorification. I know all that there is to know. And it's all usually very complicated. The whole process of teaching in that way is usually very, very complicated. And it has to do with the individual choosing to make an effort to discover all-knowingness. And even if it does discover all-knowingness, there's one thing that it doesn't know, that which knows. 
It doesn't know the nature of the knower. Jesus said it's more difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. But all of that teaching is about becoming rich in knowledge. Uh, you describe it uh, now in words. If you would have to describe it as a feeling, how would you... Oh, God. You can I don't think you can. I don't, you can't really describe it as a feeling because a feeling is another thing that can be known. You know, the I, the self, knows feelings. When there is no longer a self, feelings seem to happen, but there isn't anything that knows them. Or is there some kind of energetic sensation? Or Sorry? Is there something like an energetic sensation? Or, yeah, no. I don't know how you, you know. If there was, you, you, you would then say that that's something that you can feel or try yeah. to feel. No, this, this is beyond knowing. This is unknowable, so it can't be described in any way to do with feelings or whatever. But there's some sense in you, right? Sorry? <laughs> there's some sensation in you. No, well, there's sensation. Uh, in unknowing, sensation arises, but it arises for no one. The sensation of joy or whatever can arise, but it's nobody's joy. There is no ownership. You There's total poverty. To, uh, liberation is total poverty. I know, yeah. And total richness. Because you sometimes say it's the constant. It's constant. Or the it's constant. the only, you could say it's the only constant, but that doesn't mean to say it's a, it's a moving constant. It is, it's, it is all there is. <laughs> yeah. It's easier to describe in words than as a... It's, yeah, although words can't describe it. No. <coughs> it's all there is. This is, it's this, it's this, already it's this, it's shouting at you. Hi, um, when you said that seeking keeps it at bay, what Sorry? is that? When you said that seeking keeps it at bay, when there is seeking, I don't think that. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> you said that seeking keeps it at bay. At bay. At bay. Oh yeah. Yeah. What exactly do you mean by that? How can that well, be? Well, seeking is separation. Yeah. So the energy directly there's a contraction. There's an energy of seeking for something which already is, but in seeking it, you make it turn it into something that will be. I'm seeking fulfilment. It will be if I seek it. So I'm seeking it and it's going like that because it already is and you only see it as something that will be. So by seeing yeah. it as something that will be, you keep it as an object that's constantly moving in front of you. But does that make it worse than someone yes, that's not... Yes, yeah. <laughs> someone that's everything not is, Everything is worse for the me <laughs> because the me lives in... <laughs> The illusion of separation. Does that mean it's more likely for someone that isn't seeking? No, it doesn't, as well. <laughs> That's why it's wonderfully hopeless. Okay.
I think you need a microphone. I can't quite hear you. Uh, Maastricht is a city in the south of I Holland. I know, it, yeah. Well, yeah. I remember something happened there some many years ago. Well... The common market. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, right, yeah, that one. Maastricht, <laughs> yeah, I know Maastricht, yeah. Yeah, well, it was a very funny day because it was really quiet and it felt like everything was empty. And To whom it, did it feel like everything was empty? Well, it... Who felt? Yeah, well, I, okay. I may have been there. All right. But um, it, it was kind of fascinating. And, and uh, I, I went shopping with Elizabeth, and usually I don't like it. But I, I didn't mind at all, because it was all kind of yeah, yeah. fascinating. So she could buy anything she liked? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. It didn't matter. <laughs> right. That, to me, that feels like an experience. Yeah. Probably. Well done. Maybe it'll happen. You said that feels like an experience about what, what the gentleman said, huh? It felt, yeah, the experience is what happens to me. Yeah. Me lives in experiences. Yeah. Me is the experiencer, apparently. Yeah. But that's a problem that, that I feel when I listen to you, that on one hand I like it very much, and on the other hand I think some, a lot of times um, this is not about what I, this is not about my life. This is about perhaps something that I want, but it's not about my... No, you don't have a life. Sorry? You don't have a life. No, that's what you say. And then I think, that's true, but it's not, it's not my experience. Oh, well, no, it wouldn't be your, your experience. It's that you do have a life. Mostly, But yes. it's being suggested that you don't. Yeah. I understand. You don't like that, do you? <laughs> Sorry? You don't like that. I idea. do like that. I do oh. like that very much, yeah. But it's not, it's not so real. Most of the time it's not so real for me. What isn't? Uh, that, uh, that I don't have a life. No, it's not at all. It wouldn't be real. When you, when you collapse, when the me collapses, then that which is real collapses with it. And all that's left is real and unreal. Because it's empty fullness. It's a mystery. Real and under the wall, uh, when, when you collapse, the wall suddenly becomes real and unreal. But not to you, it just is what it naturally is. There's nothing seeing it as only a real wall. It's not a real wall. That isn't real. That's empty fullness. That's no thing walling. I like your smile. I want uh, to ask uh, the, um, the influence of thought. What, what is um thought is just part of uh, what's happening. It's it's a confirmation of a story. Thought is a story. It's words describing a story. She doesn't love me anymore. 
I'm yeah, going bankrupt. I don't understand this. Tony Parsons is an idiot. <laughs> Tony Parsons is so good looking and so obviously very intelligent. But That's another good point. Yeah. <laughs> Thought is just, uh, you know, words. But do they this relate to what is happening or not? Well, they probably do, yeah. In most cases, yeah. Well, they, they relate their record of what seems to be happening. But uh, do they... Or what, or what, for instance, what the, the, the self would like to happen. I would like to win the lottery or I would like her to love me again. <laughs> but uh, when, I, when I get a thought, for, for instance, uh, now I'm going to ask something to you. Uh, and then I, I say, Tony, and then... It's only a confirmation of an energy. I'm going to ask you something is already energetically there and then the thought just confirms it. Before you decide to get up, mm -hmm. you think you're deciding to get up and walk across the room, but actually it's already happening in here. And then the thought, I'm going to get up, sort of, that's the, the me sort mm -hmm. of owning the idea of getting up. So you, you said that, so then, um you, I, I can remember that you once said um, um, you cannot improve your life. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> I don't think I would say that because as far as I'm concerned, you don't have a life. You don't have a yeah, that came afterwards, probably. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but what about you cannot improve your life? Is is it? Uh, is it true or not? Well, obviously, you, you haven't got to, how can you improve something you don't have? You don't have a life, there is no one there. The, it's an illusion that you have a life, and it's also very much an illusion that you could have the choice to, to improve it. There is no free will or choice. So whether you have a mind or whether you have an ego or not, um, it, it doesn't matter to what's happening. Nothing matters. Nothing, matters. nothing matters. Nothing matters. Because nothing is happening. Yeah, I don't know. Hi, Tony. Can you talk a bit more about me and being? About me and being. Not any more than I've talked about already. It's um, <laughs> one. One is this this um, energy which is contracted, which creates a certain, the illusion of there being a me, and and that is being, which is energy, taking the form of contraction. So it's emptiness arising in which there is everything, and in that emptiness arises a sense of uh, an individual who thinks it is a separate experience of that everything. So dualism arises in that contracted energy, which you call being. Being is just that in which it arises. So um, you, could, you could say that there, can't, there are times when there is being happening and then being is all there is. Yes, that's something that uh I don't know if it's an experience or not, but I, I feel that it's me and being all the time. Maybe. And like you say, uh, there's so many paradoxes going on. So, so that, say it a bit louder. There's so many paradoxes going on in my mind now. Um, for example, at, at, on one hand, I have the experience of time. You have? The experience of time. And on the other hand, time, oh. time, time. It's for you experience time. Yes. And on the other hand, if I go into it and analyze whatever it is, there's no time, there's no space. No. So you're... It's, uh, I can already see I it. I can't be sure about that, but the feeling is that there's being and being happening. Exactly. And there's also the... the so I think I... First time I heard you, like, one month ago on YouTube, just found a, a movie from you, and I immediately knew that 
uh, I can just go on with my life and at some point whatever happened to you will happen to me and to everybody else and I can't do anything about it. But nothing happened to me. Well, yes. Thank you. Tony, I'm not so good in English, but uh, Sorry. I'm not so good in English. I tried to uh, ask the question. Eh? Yeah. Uh, so I'm confirming your saying about an emptiness is taking a form. This, in other words, is that that uh, you don't? I mean, um, the form, uh, the the energy, the emptiness decide where you are born. Oh, where you are going to be, or no? There is anything? no, not there isn't something that decides. It's just energy taking that form, energy in that form, and and that body is born, yeah. um, and that's just energy in that form. There isn't there isn't anything directing uh, energy in any way. It's wild. It's, it has no. There's no direction or meaning to it. But how about? Your parents, your family, the, the land where you're born, is everything just... Energy, just, just energy taking that form. It's, there isn't anything making that happen. It's just something that appears to happen. It has no meaning of any kind or direction. Like this form too. It's all... Uh, I mean, it's not really the form that I have now, I mean... Well, uh, you, the form that is there, you don't have a form, but there is just form. All the time there's a sense of a, of a self there, then it thinks that it has this form. I live in this body, I am a self that lives in this body. That's the, that, what we're pointing to here, is that that is an illusion. So what, what is it doing here? Then? It's, it's not the, doing anything, it just is. There isn't anything that's doing anything. All there is, is what is and is not. And that is not doing anything. It hasn't come from anywhere, it's not going anywhere. It just is what it is. That's the mystery. It can't be comprehended. But why am I doing No, that would really you say why, then you want a reason or meaning given to why. There is no why. It's, it's stunning, it's a mystery, can't be comprehended. The last thing that me or the self wants to hear is that there's no meaning to its existence. Well, there is no meaning to its existence because its existence is illusory. But how about your children, or, or it's all illusion. I well, mean. children are energy in the form of children. So it's it's just playing a game. No, it's not playing a game. It just is. Just one. What is this searching then? I'm, I mean, I'm here now as a form. No, you're not here. You might feel certain that you're here, and that's the illusion. I am sure I am. Yeah. So what's being pointed out to here, or suggested here, is that that is an illusion. 
the certainty that I am. There is no I am, it just is what is and is not. of years ago I had a kind of revelation and I was asking how where am I looking at so what am I looking at yeah, yeah. at living at I don't know what exactly the question was but then I saw there was only light there was only what is so you called what is and and then there was something that looks at a box and in that box were that opens and there were kind of DVDs thousands millions I don't know and all through that light all the pictures began to play and it, it was very exciting. Well, it sounds like you have quite a lot of fun. Yes, I, I, yes, I had a lot of fun. So, and the next moment I was not there anymore, it just I was like in the picture, but I oh. couldn't be there. Have you thought of making films? Or like no, that? no, but, <laughs> but that's what I saw. That's what's happening. Yeah, that's what's happening, yes. I guess that it is. Apparently. Apparently, yes, apparently, because it is not happening at all. No. Yeah. Sometimes you can uh, hear when people take drugs or whatever, uh, they say uh, it was like they have the same experience, not, not an experience, but the same thing as you had in the park. Oh, uh, there are people. Yeah. How, how does that work? Well, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't. No, in some people, it's just what happens. People have glimpses, that's what you're saying. Yeah, but some, Many people have glimpses. Yeah, but sometimes they use drugs. Sorry? For example, oh no, that's burglary. <laughs> that is? That's a personal experience. Drugs are a personal experience. And however heightened that is, it's not the same as a glimpse. Because a glimpse is that there's no one, there's just empty fullness. Uh, in drug, uh, if drugs are taken, it's just a, a heightened personal experience. There's no um, connection with one on the other. There's no connection. And uh, you know, when what your glimpse what is glimpsed is very ordinary, but totally different to what was there before, because before the what what is happening is seen through the eyes of separation, through a veil of separation. Suddenly that veil drops. There's nothing left but what is. But that but it isn't anything like what's experiencing with taking drugs. Because they describe the same thing. I was they, just wondering what happens. Any, so I haven't met anybody yet who's taken drugs and described what is. And, and the other thing about it is that what is can't be described. I can't. Nobody can tell you what is. What is. Uh, uh, nobody can describe what is. If they could, it would be known. Yeah, I was just wondering how that works energetically, or when the eye drops away, if you take drugs or whatever. How that, it's the same in a way, you would say. Well, I don't, I, I don't think it is the same. But it's different. Yeah. Liberation is not extraordinary. Actually, separation is extraordinary. Liberation is totally an ordinary and uh, magnificent. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Tea ready? It's ready. Oh, thank you. Tea's ready. <laughs> yeah. This dropping away of the sense of me could happen to just anybody, is it? Well, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Because there isn't a me to drop away. Because but I was all the time, all the time, there seems to be a me in the contracted dualistic state, which is dualistic, or which is illusory, it seems as though there's something there. And then, then the idea arises that it's going to drop away. Something's going to happen. Because the me lives in happenings. It's always living in a moving... It seems to be living in its story in which things happen. So the dropping away of me will happen one day. Or so it waits for it to happen, and it never does, because there is no me to drop away. So we're, we're again, we're talking about a paradox, we're talking about a mystery. Yeah, because so the, the liberation is the end of something that was never happening. Anyway. C could I imagine somebody who just five minutes ago killed hundred people? Killed? Killed hundred people, for example? Killed, killed, killed hundred people. Well, so what? And then that's a story. And then the next, the next moment, he could have this. Exp it's not an experience. But, but he doesn't kill anybody. Nobody has ever killed anybody because there isn't anyone. Well, yeah. Because we are thinking if if we are engaged in. We aren't, though. Yeah. We aren't. <laughs> It's the grand illusion, which most people think is normal. So we have no choice of sitting here or not, it's... No, there's no choice. Mm. Thank you. There is a neuroscientist, because neuroscientists established uh, about 20 years ago that the whole idea of there being an individual with free will and choice is completely illusory. And there's one of, the, one of those neuroscientist has written a book uh, about that and in part of the book he actually says that the way we set up the world and, and, and judge people as having murdered somebody put them into prison is completely uh, um, based on an illusion I think his name's Will Smith or something he's written a book called no one, or no free will, or something. Sam Harris. Sam Harris. Sam Harris. <laughs> so I, I don't think he's saying anything. Oh, too late. <laughs> Yeah, I have a, a little question. A little one? Yeah. Oh. Could... Too long. <laughs> <laughs> Could you say that... Um, you can't say that me drops away, but you could possibly say that it stops happening. You could say that, but it never was really happening. What really drops away is the idea that I am real. The whole, the, the, the one illusion there is, really, is that I am a real, I am real, real. So the world is real. The illusion that the me lives in is that it is real and the world is real. That, that illusion suddenly doesn't happen anymore, you could say.
Uh, you've mentioned before that uh, there is an energy present here that could, well, be, could be liberating in... in no, the... no, no. There's just energy, and with energy, in it, within energy there appears to be the illusion of contraction, a contraction energy, which then apparently falls away. There isn't... Energy isn't... Uh, there isn't a thing called liberation. There's no such thing as liberation. So I, I there's no such thing as separation either. Could this energy be liberating, this energy that's present? No, because it wouldn't find anything to be liberating to. Is there an energy that's present here? Well, I think what you're not getting is that all there is is energy. This is just energy, or what, as I said at the beginning of the talk, empty fullness. This is empty fullness. Or, or wherever you go, there is only empty fullness. Wherever you go, there's only what is and is not. Wherever you go, there is only beingness. But those are words. There isn't an energy and not an energy. There just is energy. It's not liberating in that it has a, an intention to liberate. It can't, because there isn't anything to liberate. Thank you. There's a mic that can go over there. Um, oh, we've got one. Um, how about emotions? I mean, Sorry. Emotions, all the emotions. Emotions, feelings. Do you feel that? No, I don't get anything. It's all over. There isn't anyone. But emotions and feelings happen. To but you not, too? But no, not to me, no. OK, let's start again. There isn't anyone here. Yeah. There's no me. Here, the, the, the illusion that there's an I, a, a me here, has evaporated. It simply isn't there anymore. So all that's left is what seems to be happening: the sky, the room, apparent people, and apparent emotions happen, but not to anyone. They just are what happens in, in the room or anywhere. Or in. If you can't understand no. Okay. Uh, Tony, when I'm uh, questioning uh, uh, what I'm uh, experiencing, who is that? that is questioning the experience? Uh, the self, the separate self. But is that meing or is that...? Me, it's me. That's the me, me, the self or the I. I am. I am real and I am asking a question. Who is it that's asking the question? I am. I am the experiencer. But is the, uh, um, 
the experience, uh, the purpose of uh, experience uh, for the uh, experienced existence, or for the no, uh, for the well, you could the, call the, it empty, the, the emptiness and the fullness. Experience, you experience what seems to be happening. You could call it existence. It's a bit of a of a vague word, but you can experience sitting on a seat. Let's, let's keep it simple. So the me experiences sitting on a seat. That's separation. If, if there is nobody um, to experience anything, how would you experience uh, dying? How, how? How would you experience it when you would die? Well, it doesn't experience anything inside. There is just the body. It's nobody's body. But what if the body dies? Then that's simply the body dying. But there isn't anybody that dies in the body because there isn't anybody in the body. The death of the body is just an appearance. But you wouldn't even know when you die. <laughs> well, you don't die because there isn't anyone to die. Nobody dies. All the time there's the illusion of there being a me or a self or an I, and then that, the me, the self or the I, thinks it's going to die. Because it thinks it's alive, it thinks it's real. I am real, I am real, and I am going to die. At the point of death, real death, not near death, there's a sudden recognition that there never was an I am to die. But that's the same as so-called liberation. When the, when, the, when the I am is no more, it's recognised that there never was one. It was a complete illusion. That either happens in the living, in the, in the apparent living body, or at the point of death. At the point of death, it's the end of the, uh, of the illusion that there is any separation, that there is an I am. Yeah, but you would think there would be any feeling about the body leaving, or the energies no, oh, there is all the time there's a me, the me, the me is shit scared of dying, that's the feeling it has. I'm really afraid of dying. Now what if the I is, is not there anymore? Then, then there's nothing that would be afraid of dying because there's nothing that's going to die. No, not being afraid, but uh, what about the energy? There's energy in your body, yeah. but when you die it's, it collapses again? Or? Yeah, that's what's happening. It's just like... The energy of the body dying is what's happening. Just like the sun shining or the sound of a motor car or whatever. It's just what is. There's nobody in it. There's nobody in it. It's just happening, apparently happening. It's empty fullness.
It can't be understood, it can't be comprehended, you can't... There's no way this can be imagined. It's beyond imagination. <laughs> For the me. idea of there is, some, there is some idea around that uh, for for bodies who are liberated that after that there is no continuance and for bodies of course no yeah. and for bodies who are not liberated there is some kind oh, of oh that's, that's, yeah, that's, that, that's also nonsense then yeah it's all part of the whole uh, um, investment that the me has in in, in continuing so it has such an investment in knowing and continuing that it then creates the idea that after death it will continue through resurrection or its energy will continue in another plane. It's all this panic about abs its own absence. Right? It'll think of any way of trying to continue. <laughs> So mic, please. <clears throat> this about this idea of continuing life after death or re reincarnation. Yeah, there is idea of reincarnation. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there is one idea that uh, the entity which lives the body reincarnates in another body. Yeah. But what Osho said, <coughs> Osho, yeah. Yeah, Osho, oh, Bhagavan Sri Rajneesh, uh, he, uh, he said that uh, not the energy of one sort of entity is reincarnating in the other body, but it's a kind of a, a combination from different energies which are then uh, coming into a certain body, so that every, you cannot say that you was a Cleopatra or no, okay. you was a oh. you, Caesar. It's a kind of combination from different energies oh. which are kind of um, ca coming together in a, right. in a certain body. So mm. just uh, and my husband believes in that. In this, your kind husband of, does. Yeah, no, no yeah. right. he doesn't believe in this reincarnation uh, direct way, right. you know, person to person. But just no, okay. it is a. I would like to, to hear. Okay, so that's all based on the illusion that time is real, that somehow there is a beginning, a middle, and an end, or and then at the end there's a continuation of that apparent journey or story. There is no story. There is no continuation. There is no time, and there's nothing happening. So how can there be a reincarnation except in the story in the imagined story of the individual but as far as i'm concerned the whole idea of reincarnation be it a very simple one or a more complex one is what the me wants to believe and based on the illusion that me is real and time is real because if you're going to have reincarnation that's real you must have somebody who's alive now who later on, whichever way, will then continue in another form. But there is no then or continuation, there is no time. So it's all based on an illusion. It's based on wishful thinking. And, and there was also in the Tibetan stories, uh, from uh, the Tibetan Buddhism, yeah, there is, oh, was Buddhism. a story 
There was a story uh, that uh, the one very venerated uh, Buddhist yeah. monk uh, was um, walking somewhere in the in, in the field, and suddenly he tried to rape uh, a girl who was who was uh, right. there. Now, of course, she she uh, went to, uh, ran to her home, uh, crying, uh, shouting. So the people were surprised. Why did he uh, try to to, mm. uh, to violate her? And they came to uh, to him to ask him, and he said that at that moment there was some kind of soul seeking reincarnation, right. and he was trying to uh, to 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 help her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And of, of when the parents heard about it, so they said, "No, no, now you can have her." Yeah. Oh, wow. And he said, "Now the time is it's, uh, it's uh, time is lost." Yeah. There were two goats <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mating on on, on, on on the field, so the soul has incarnated in oh, wow. in, in the goats. That's, that sounds like a very good line. I wouldn't mind trying that. Huh? Um, <laughs> It's a good chat up line. Yeah. So that is the that, that's one of this, uh, the ideas yeah. how how they see it. So that the, the soul wants to reincarnate and makes no difference. He's looking for a body, yeah. and then uh, what is available is being kind of yeah. That's a nice story. That's a nice story. Yeah. It's all part of the story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm here. I'm oh, there. <laughs> uh, when you say, for example, the wall is real and unreal, in that real part, is, that, is there any story? It's the real part. It the real part is what is apparently seen. So, so the, is the wall is empty fullness. The fullness is its appearance. That's, you could say that's the apparent. I mean, this is an explanation. But you, you won't get it because yeah. it's not like this. Yeah. But the real part is what you apparently see as a wall. Mm -hmm. The unreal part is that it's nothing mm -hmm. or emptiness. That's yeah. emptiness. Yeah. This is emptiness, that's emptiness. This is whatever you're feeling, everything that's happening in this room is emptiness in a form. So constantly what you seek is constantly all there is. So you're sitting on what you long for. You're breathing what you long for. You're hearing what you long for. Because the beloved is, is the emptiness that is singing to you constantly. So, so is there any story in, in what is happening? You say, Sorry? you say, what is happening? Is there any story in what is happening? No, there only is an, an appearance of a story. There, there seems to be a story. Like everything else, it's real and unreal. There is only appearance, there isn't anything that's real. Because everything is emptiness. Mm -hmm. you, you said you're seeing what you long for. Well, no, yeah, yeah. What you long for is constantly all there is. But what you long for is constantly all there is. What you long for is constantly all there is. That's Bloody amazing. It's incredible. How can we miss it? How can you miss it? Well, you miss it by trying to know it. So the lover is there constantly, and you reject the lover by trying to know and own the lover. Amazing. We would kill it if we. we would well, kill you don't it kill it because you can't kill it. You can't kill everything. Well, if we if we <laughs> if we could grab it, yeah, yeah, we yeah, would yeah, destroy yeah. it. Yeah. I have constantly the feeling of um, the um, comparison with Plato's grotto. You know, mm. the people who, who sit down in the grotto. Oh, right. Plato. You know, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
it's it's very much yeah. well mm. lots of uh, yeah. At first you are talking about nothingness. Uh, get that up in there, I can't yeah. quite hear. At first you are talking about nothingness, yeah? and then suddenly the word beloved is yeah. there a different because the word beloved is more safer than right. nothingness. Yeah, words, words. But they are the same. Beloved oh. is, the, is the nothingness, is the emptiness and the fullness. It's all there is, the beloved. God, everything. So. But some people don't like it because it sounds spiritual or something. I just like the word the beloved. It's because you, you just grab all the safety away, eh? I mean, believing in things, believing in uh, God or believing in uh, reincarnation, everything, you take it away. I don't, but it, it gets It, it feels like that yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah. So, and... Uh, then you said nothingness, and then suddenly beloved. Then it yeah. seems like it's coming back again. Okay. There's something greater than than <laughs> this. Just popping up, um, the word beloved. I love the word beloved. I love the word beloved as yeah, well. Yeah, so do I. Um, is it love a mystery? Well, uh, yeah, it's unconditional love which can't be comprehended. I know, but yeah. that is a mystery as well. The, 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 the love, beloved is it. unconditional love, it's all there is. But it's not warm and cuddly, it's not so uh,
I, I was wondering, after uh, liberation, uh, how do uh, things like emotions uh, happen if there is no I or feeling? Oh, they just happen in the body or in the whole. But the body is, doesn't have anyone in it anymore, it's just a thing, the body. So emotions arise in the body or wherever. But there's no use at all. Sorry? There's no use? You can no use. No use of the emotion because there's nobody there. Well, there's nobody to use anything anymore. There's just what happens. But there, there, there can be a response out of an emotion, but it isn't anybody that's responding. Yeah, that's weird, though. Yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. weird. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Don't forget one, one thing that is is. Well, the, the brain still functions, obviously. Well, in fact, it always has. The me is just an illusory added idea, really. I mean, there isn't a me. So the brain always is the functioning organism in terms of the story, or the apparent story. So if an emotion arises, there can be a response out of the body, which is which comes out of the brain. Yeah, but there's nothing to win. But there's no longer an illusory me or self that lays claim to that response. It's not me that's angry, there can be anger or whatever, and there can be a response, but it comes directly out of the brain, and it's completely without meaning or purpose. Do you have an example? Or Sorry? Do you have an example of that in your life? No, I can't. No what? It, do you have an example of how that works? Example? Yeah. Um, no, not really. Like, yeah. No, when you, when there's anger... Uh, yeah, in the body, there can be a response. Yeah, but what, what does it look like? Uh, just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fuck like, off. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I can't, you can't, you can't make it up. But, but is there less anger in your life than and fear? I don't have a life. No. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> so, so there's laughter. So this, yeah. this, there's laughter in here, and and it laughs. But there isn't anybody that does it. Yeah, but. After liberation, is there less fear in...? Yeah, there, there tends to be thought and those sort of things slow down. There isn't anything any longer that's listening to the thought. There's no energy in there that takes hold of the thought and turns it into a drama. So all of those sort of things that were excited, you could say, by the sense of a self, so the self is excited about emotions or thoughts or, or afraid of them, that falls away. Not, not necessarily entirely, but it slows down to a natural response rather than being a very agitated, neurotic response. But don't forget, the difficulty with all of this is that the is that the me thinks things are important and meaningful, you know, actions and responses and anger and whatever. But, but that, that whole drama of anything being important is just simply not there anymore. So the response that comes out of anger is just what it is. It has no significance. Tony, can you say something about conditioning? Well, yes, conditioning, the, the brain takes on conditioning as the, as the per, let's say there's a person, there's a me in the body, yeah? And it grows up and, it, and conditioning is, it comes out of it being involved in the world and the brain, uh, the organism of the brain takes on that conditioning and so there would be a response that would come out of a conditioned response held in the brain and, and, and whether the me is there or not that response would still come out but when the me is no longer um, 
you could say, strengthening the sense of conditioning, so then the conditioning also falls away. Not, in, not necessarily entirely, but it just doesn't have the same importance anymore. It weakens. Sorry? The conditioning weakens. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. And isn't it... Doesn't it facilitate to uh, try to uh, lower your conditioning? No, you're back to somebody having a choice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have another question. Oh. Is that okay? Yeah. I, I am puzzled that um, oh. somebody who is sitting in front of the audience with a microphone, while we only have a, a passing microphone, and yeah. who is selling his books and no, is organizing meetings, he okay. says, I'm not a teacher, that, that's puzzling me. Sorry, so the last bit again. That, that somebody like that says, I don't teach, I am not a teacher, that hmm. puzzles me. Oh, it would do, because what you're doing is, is projecting the idea that because you are a self, let's presume, then there must be a self sitting here with a microphone who's written books and is now communicating something. So what, you, what you're projecting on to this is the idea that there's a self here, or me, that is, has written books, chosen to write books and actually done it, and is sitting here now actually choosing to communicate something. That's a complete illusion. Uh, nobody wrote books and nobody's sitting here and nobody's communicating. It's just a body. There's a body here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and communication appears to be happening, but there's nothing that's doing that. It's what's apparently happening. That's why it's completely without agenda. There's no agenda here. There's no agenda here to teach, because it's recognised that there's no one here anyway. So who is there to teach? And there isn't anything to teach anyway, because nothing's happening. But that's a funny thing, because most of the public, most of the listeners, think that they are there. So most oh, of yeah. us think we are there, here, but you, do, you are not Absolutely. there. Absolutely, they're yeah. under the illusion. It's quite a strange thing. They're under the illusion that they chose to come here, and they're also under the illusion that all the time they're here, they might get something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they would, that would happen if they were a teacher. They would be getting a teaching which would be very, very useful for them and make them feel very good for about three weeks. But there's nobody. There is even nobody here because sometimes... There's no one here, no. No, there's so nobody here. Sometimes I'm looking and then there's no nothing. Oh, oh you're back to that again. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is very nice. Yeah. Yeah, I pay for nothing, so that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new picture. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. But the metaphysics it always says when the atoms uh, the atoms and the emptiness around the atoms is so great, so it's yeah. amazing that we even can see each yeah, well, other. Really, science, science is moving towards the same yes, thing yes. that we're talking about here. Yes, you talk about that. That's very nice. <laughs> and it's even uh, obvious that in uh, this latest decennia, more people awakens from this dream. So I said that again. In the latest century, uh, latest decennia, more people awakens from the dream. That it happens now. More people are awakening from this dream. From this dream. How do you know that? Because I listen to the writers and oh. uh, yes, there are more books about it, non-dualistic mm. books and yeah. uh, even I meet some guys here in Holland and that's beautiful, that's nice. Because well, there is a shift in the old yeah, the a psyche shift. of people yes, yes. towards a sort of anarchy. Yes. But that's happening in, within people and also politically. Yeah. Yes, there's something happening. Yeah. Well, there's it's, always something. It's obvious, <laughs> obvious, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> there's something happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible story. 
Apparently. Apparently. Uh, apparently. Yes. <laughs> I'm still puzzled about nothing happens. Well, you can't. Uh, you can only be puzzled because it's a mystery, it can't be known. This is empty fullness, it's a mystery. You can, well, you'll always be puzzled by that, of course. Yeah. It can't be understood. It's not, uh, the meaning is not that it uh, something happens, always happens in time, right? No, there isn't anything to happening. No. There's nothing happening. So it's, a, uh, it's not a right perspective. It's, well, forget yeah. about it. <laughs> this, this word anarchy. Energy. And now anarchy. Oh, anarchy. Uh, yeah. You say it, it's, it's mo something is, well, nothing cha changing, but the anarchy, the chaos. Well, anarchy in its purest form is that which, out, which is, doesn't recognize authority of any kind. Yeah. Uh, the, the sort of anarchy in the world that's happening is, is actually artificial, because it, it doesn't recognize the established authority, but it wants to replace it with another, in the end, another sort of authority. Yeah, okay. But that is, in a way, related to what we're talking about here, in a sense. This is completely, this completely destroys or uh, deconstructs the whole sense of establishment, the established religion, the established ideas about who we are and what this is, the established teachings about, it completely throws that into a turmoil. Uh, but it doesn't come, that, 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 that uh, energy doesn't come from any sort of authority. There's no authority. There's no God or no, nothing else that's out there. All there is is what is. established politics, established religions, any established teaching is, is only arising in dualism. So it's a polarization, it's always about better or worse. Or and it never works, of course. Um, how is it about voting? Because next week we're all going to vote and everybody, so, so okay. how about voting for the parliament? Well, it just happens. Yeah, but everybody is going to make a choice and then there's a big yeah, but illusion. It doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> but but none of it matters, it's all a story. It's all about uh, better it, or worse. But it is energy, it is energy, a kind of energy is... This making. energy can arise as a political vote, voting system, yeah. Yeah, but then it's going to take a kind of a form. But is the form a kind of illusion it's making? Well, all form is illusion. All, all form is emptiness in a form. So we've got It's a, all an appearance. So the parliament is a kind of empty thing. Par parliament is, is an emptiness appearance. Emptiness, or empty fullness, or... <laughs> but it has no significance. Yes, yes. But does it have a purpose? It doesn't have a purpose. Yeah. It appears to. It appears to, yeah. All of it, if you're utterly futile as you probably noticed.
Tony, what if uh, at the end of this lecture or, or this uh, meeting, I go to the book table and I take a book? Take, take one? <laughs> yes. How dare you? And I say, there's no one here to pay. What, what would you uh -huh. say? Well, there's someone here who would come over and hit you. <laughs> <laughs> you can, anything can happen. Sorry? Anything can happen. We just wouldn't allow you in anymore. No, I'm trying. <laughs> no, but it do, it doesn't that, that, doesn't that uh, illustrate a kind of a methodological problem of what you say? But, I'm, but there isn't, you're being hypothetical. You don't know that you can go over there and do that. And I don't know what would happen if you did do it. But John's a very powerful guy. <laughs> <laughs> he, was in, he was in the army. Okay. <laughs> I take my question back, sorry. That's, well, that's why we chose him. We chose him. Because... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a frightening message. I have, a, I have another question. Do you think Buddha was a fool? No, but if there was a Buddha, there was just a Buddha. But what, what seemed to come out of B B the Buddha, yeah. <laughs> as it did, as it did sure. uh, what yeah. comes out as a teaching, which is purely dualistic. It's pure, purely dual. dualistic. Yeah, of course, it's a teaching. All teachings are dualistic. They have to be. They're based on the illusion that there's someone that needs to learn something and do something to get to somewhere. But do you think he was a fool? Do I think he was what? A fool? Fool. I don't know. I never met him, so I have <laughs> no
Would you recommend anybody a book? No, I can't. I have, why would I recommend anything and who would I recommend it to? I, I was asking, would you recommend anyone a book of Tony Parson? No. I'd be, it'd be better if you didn't read them. There aren't any you know, books, words, or bits of paper. This is about something very alive. They're just very conceptual. But then would you recommend <coughs> visiting a meeting uh, of Tony Parsons? I would recommend, yeah. I would recommend that if you gave me nearly all of your income, you'd become enlightened more quickly. <laughs> There aren't any recommendations. There's only what is and is not. But then it seems like you, you say there is no process in life. No, there's no. No. Process is time. Yeah. That's an illusion. Yeah, but I will be here. I was here yesterday. No, you won't. <laughs> And you're not here today. I recognize your face. <laughs> you only appear to be. Okay. I got a message, yes, yes. So the wonderful thing about this message is it doesn't matter what anybody asks or says, you just can't get hold, there's nothing to get hold of. There's nothing to get hold of because all there is is emptiness. And the amazing thing about that is that, is that this lives in emptiness. Wherever it goes, whatever it does, there's simply emptiness. An empty fullness and that empty fullness is what is. It can't be escaped from. No matter where you go, you can never escape from the Beloved. All there is, is the Beloved. Thank you very much. Thank you.